We'll move on, Keith, and talk about Tottenham. Now, they achieved a club record revenue of £550 million for the 22-23 season. What are your thoughts? Are Spurs now on an upward trajectory? Look, I think full credit to Daniel for uh, doing what he did with the stadium uh, in a very difficult environment, around obviously around the COVID situations. Uh, but he pulled it through, he got it done, and uh, that's shown that the revenue that that stadium is now making for him uh, has, has brought those record numbers you just mentioned, over half a billion of revenue, which is incredible for a Premier League club uh, like Spurs to have had that increase over time. They're not going to get into any PSR issue, uh, that's for sure. I think that they've still got about 70 million a year of allowable deductions that will come in. So even though they've made a, a pretty sizable loss, they'll be okay and they're going to be in very good shape to go forward. I don't think the squad itself is too far away from being a pretty finished product. I think Ange Postacoglu's done a good job. And so I think Spurs could be uh, not too far away from spending a bit more money and, uh, and moving things forward. We're talking about spending money. Levy actually confirmed there were some talks over potential investment or takeover. What do you make of that, Keith? And actually, do Spurs need the equivalent of like a Sir Jim Ratcliffe to come in to really take them to that next level? Well, I've been involved with a number of groups who've had discussions with Spurs that I know genuinely have, have tried their best to uh, to get into a minority ownership. But mainly they want to look at getting minority ownership, but with an option to then take control at some stage. Some of the biggest names in the world in terms of finance have been involved in those discussions, and they've all had a good look at this. Rothschilds are the advisors for uh, for Spurs, and they've had, uh, you know, a share in Spurs on the market for a number of years now. And nobody's been able to quite come to an agreement that suits Daniel. Now, the recent problems that Joe Lewis has had, who is the, uh, you know, been the, the main owner of, of Spurs, may lead him to be a bit more, a bit keener to try and find a solution. So I am sensing that something may, may be coming up um, in the off season, I think about some sort of bigger minority stake in Spurs. So I'm sensing that the deal is going to get much closer to being done. I think Joe Lewis might have lost a bit of his motivation and appetite of being uh, being there in the public eye. I think even Daniel Levy is now deciding that uh, maybe it's time that things, you know, were, were at least you know, some, some sort of view towards the future is, is put in place. Uh, ne not necessarily a handover straight away, but certainly getting somebody in to learn the business. And they're doing so on the back of showing such great numbers. So, you know, and the asset itself in, in London, I know that there's also great plans around, you know, real estate and other property development around the new stadium. So there's a big vision there. And if there's somebody there that can work with them, that'd be great. So do you think then potentially that someone in, say, in the summer window, so we're saying July comes in, it would be a minority shareholder that then would have the view, a bit maybe like Sir Jim Ratcliffe, that then would take over the club in potentially months, years to come? That's, I think that would be the, the sort of structure they look to do, is to uh, to put somebody in with a minority stake, but with an option to take uh, first right of refusal to be able to buy control at the appropriate time. That could be two, three, five years ahead. Uh, but I think that's the sort of deal that will be done. And, I mean, you mentioned in there about the, the state-of-the-art stadium. Do you think it's fair to say, Keith, they have one of the best stadiums in the world? And actually, this is the sort of model that other clubs will go down and copy, given the success of the stadium. There's no doubt that uh, the stadium is a, is a fantastic asset, but it was built also as a revenue generator. Things, as you know, allowing the NFL to play there takes a lot of planning. And uh, while Everton's new stadium will probably be the best football stadium, Spurs definitely is a multi-sport stadium and it's probably the best of its type. So there's no doubt that the, the vision there was fantastic. Uh, I don't know if all the clubs can afford to build the, the sort of the Spurs model of being a multi-sport venue because the NFL, for instance, wouldn't go probably to the Northwest or the Midlands, etc. Uh, it would probably only go to London. So there's no point in putting that sort of expense and structure in. So I think you've got to look at things, the simple revenues of staging other sporting events like boxing, etc., concerts, those sort of things. You've got to build your stadium with that sort of flexibility. Uh, but I think that's really where the, the focus has got to be. And if we wrap up with them, Keith, it sounds, I mean, you've kind of said it in there, Ange Postacoglu really has transformed the atmosphere at the club and I think the general surrounding feeling of fans. Is it fair then the fans actually do call out for big marquee signings going into the summer so they can kick on and go for top four and actually at some point go for, for a trophy and win some silverware? Well, it's, uh, I think Ange has got the fans backing now. And I think if uh, Big Ange says something, he's gonna, he wants a player, mm -hmm. I, think we, I think he's going to be in a position where he's going to get it. 
Uh, look, you know, there's been for many years we've had the Contes and the uh, Pochettinos, etc. At Spurs, and they haven't, you know, haven't always got what they wanted from Daniel. But I think this time, Daniel can see a way forward, and I think he will back him. I don't think they're that far away. Uh, I think it may be a couple of players. I mean, there's a few there that are really quality players now, and so. They've got to look at, you know, how long can Son keep going up front? I think the front is going to be where they're going to be looking to invest. Uh, and look, it's it's a very exciting time to be a Spurs fan. Uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy that uh, at least they're seeing some some sort of progress after the some pretty tough years. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.